A very good day. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our third Tsuji English volunteer training this year. So, before we begin, let us please rise. Put our palms together to pay respect to the higher. You may do so according to your own religious faith. First bow. Second bow. Third bow. You may now rest your palms down to sing the Tsuti anthem together. At the Tsuti Foundation, we believe in the power of good deeds, good health. Let us put our palms together and recite the Tsuji Ten Precepts. One, no killing. Two, no stealing. Three, no sexual misconduct. Four, no lying. Five, no drinking. Six, no smoking, using narcotics, or chewing betel nuts. Seven, no gambling or speculation. Eight, practice filial piety and develop pleasant manners and speech. Nine, abide by traffic laws. Ten, no participation in political events or demonstrations. Let's continue to put our palms together and recite the Tsuji mission statement. Tsuji's mission statement. The Buddhist Tsuji Foundation carries on the Buddha spirit of great unconditional loving kindness and great universal compassion and adheres to Venerable Master Ying Sun's noble aspiration for Buddha's teachings for sentient beings to undertake the work of helping the poor and educating the wealthy. Therefore, our ideal is to cultivate loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity as we take action to save those in pain and suffering. We bring joy and relieve suffering, establishing a fresh and pure world of tsuji. Our method is to nurture a wisdom that perfectly melds principles and practices as we actively invite good people of the world to cultivate this field of blessings together. By diligently planting countless heart lotuses, together we will create a society of love. Our task is to unify the four major missions of charity, medicine, education, and humanistic culture. Our spirit is one of sincerity, integrity, faith, and steadfastness. We deeply believe that all sentient beings are equal and that every person possesses Buddha nature. As long as we can enter through the door of compassion, we can get a glimpse of the majesty 
and beauty of the Buddha's teachings. As long as we can enter through the door of charity, those who give can attain blessings and be joyful, while those who receive can be saved and find peace. Life is impermanent. Our lives slip away with each passing day. We must take advantage of this precious life to plant good seeds and reap good fruits. Then we can avoid the regret of entering a mountain full of treasures, but leaving empty-handed. Tsuji commissioners come together with wisdom and support each other with love. With these extraordinary causes and conditions, we join hands and take great strides on the Bodhisattva path. Because Tsuji commissioners all accept the Buddha's heart as their own heart, when one eye sees, thousands of eyes can see. Because we accept our teacher's mission as our mission, when one hand moves, a thousand hands move. When we hear the cries of others in suffering, we immediately go to their aid and relieve them of their difficulties. This is no different from the thousand amazing hands of Guanyin Bodhisattva. The same moon is universally reflected in the water of a thousand rivers. The water of a thousand rivers captures a single moon. The Buddha views all sentient beings with compassionate eyes and the Dharma reign of his teachings fall on all universally so that all can flourish. How compassionate, how wise. We who are Tsuji commissioners should practice the Tsuji path of goodness with right faith and right mindfulness. Through personal participation, we realize the truth of birth, aging, illness, and death as well as formation, existence, decay, and disappearance. Through the planning and effort of many, we create Tsuji's enduring missions, which will be passed down and praised for generations. We will leave ourselves with beautiful memories and our descendants will be proud of what we have done. To know what you have done in your previous lives, look at what you receive in this life. To know what will happen to you in a future life, look at what you do in this life. Human existence is difficult to attain, but we have already attained it. On the Bodhisattva path, we must be courageous and diligent so that love can fill our society. Then there will be a virtuous circle of goodness in the world. This is what it means to be a disciple of the Buddha's teachings, who cultivates both blessings and wisdom with right faith and right mindfulness. May these writings be used for all Tsuji volunteers to encourage each other. Thank you, everybody. Please be seated. My name is Chris, your MC, and our team for today is paving the path with loving kindness and guiding with joy. It really sounds quite easy, right? Have, just have lots of loving kindness and joy. Two of the four immeasurables antidotes to our negative mental states. Yet with these virtues, we should sincerely learn from Dharma Master Te Huang and a panel of wonderful speakers we have today on the missions of environmental protection, the core spirits of volunteerism and how to inspire others on this path. Let's start the day with Sister Monica and Sister Joyce from Taiwan and their topic is Core Spirit of Humanitarian Aid. Over to you Sister Monica. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Sister Chris. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Great. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. So uh, good afternoon to all our brothers and sisters um, in Nepal, India, um, Sri Lanka, Jordan, and other parts of the world. I understand that we also have brothers and sisters um, from Africa. So anyway, uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone. So uh, let me start with uh, uh, my sharing. So basically, um, I I know that, uh, you know, you guys have already attended the session twice. So one on March and the other one was last May, and this is the third session. So for today, um, my sharing would be focusing more on the charity distribution, the relief distribution distribution of Tsuji. So what is really uh, the relief distribution of Tsuji? 
as you have tackled in your previous session, um, Master Chen Yen has this vision. Uh, she hopes that, you know, um, this world, uh, we can purify one's mind and have a harmonious society and attain a disaster free world. So, how can we actually attain this three um, vision of Master? Uh, that is, why Master Chen Yen built Tsiji Foundation and we have our Tsiji's Eight Footprints, which I'm pretty sure that everybody here online um, knows what the Eight Footprints are. So it's the charity, the medicine, the education, the humanitarian, um, uh, hum uh, humanitarian, and then uh, international relief, uh, bone marrow registry, uh, environmental protection and community volunteerism. So basically, it's through this mission uh, where we are hoping that we can reach master's vision. And when every time uh, we see people helpless, despair and loss, that is the time that city volunteers city comes in. But of course, it's not only through help. It's not only during helpless, despair, and lost times will city appear. Even in happy times, city uh, also appears. So when this kind of you know uh, disaster happens, whether it's a it's a small scale disaster, a medium scale disaster, or a large scale disaster, city uh, volunteers comes uh, uh, comes uh, at the very at the, at the site, uh, at the very first moment. But of course, uh, in times that we cannot make it uh, the first time, I mean, uh, during the first uh, uh, incident that the disaster happened, it's okay. Uh, because um, our mission and our, mo our principle is we actually, we try to leave the last in that situation. So what is first to come and last to leave? So um, as I've said, uh, we try our best to be there at the very first uh, moment that the incident happened. But in times that we are not able to arrive at the very first moment, at least uh, we we stay there at the very last uh, at the very last minute. So anyway, um, how can we actually? I mean, having said this, how can we actually ease the hearts and minds of people? I mean, being there in the very first moment and being the last one to, to leave, will, will that actually ease the hearts of, uh, and mind of people? I don't think so, because uh, that, is what, that is where the ideology of uh, disaster relief comes in. So what is the ideology of city's disaster relief? Every time we come to a, to a situation or every time we come to a place, we try to put ourselves in their shoes. So when a disaster happens, whether it's a fire relief or a flood relief or whatever kind of disaster happens, uh, we always uh, make sure that, you know, when we arrive at the disaster area, we don't immediately assess and, you know, just do all the paperwork that we need. What we need to do is first, uh, we have to see what's happening in the surrounding. We try to put ourselves in their shoes and we try to, uh, you know, take a perspective of another person and recognize it as their as their you know recognize it as if it is theirs so we feel with the people because once we feel them then we 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 immediately uh, give selflessly and when we give selflessly then uh, sincerity uh, comes and when sincerity comes it brings actually great love and this kind of great love actually um, gives an unwavering determination uh, to this uh, you know uh, survivors of these disasters so being engaged in international relief or maybe a local relief courage and perseverance is actually very much needed so that is why um, timely comfort is also very important and of course, we also need uh, the provision of needs. So this is actually the ideology of our disaster relief. So um, let's say um, maybe uh, you, you would say, oh, these are too technical. I don't really understand what you're trying to say. But uh, maybe let me put it in a scenario wherein uh, there is a fire relief. So when a fire relief comes, uh, normally our volunteers uh, would contact uh, each other and then you know try to group themselves into a group of three or five or seven and then go to the disaster area and then what do we do there do we actually directly go to the 
uh, to the office of um, you know the the government. I mean the district office or the government office. No, because uh, first is what we do is we try to see um, ourselves. Uh, we sight we we try to see in our own eyes what's really happening uh, in that area and what are really the needs of the people. Uh, you know, um, affected by the by the disaster. So this is actually what we do. We don't uh, directly go to the office and say, "Hey, uh, please give me the name list," and we're going to help them. Yes, it's true that we are going to help them. But of course, the very first uh, important thing that we need to do is we need to an understand and assess what is really happening in that place. And um, from there on, uh, we can actually uh, see what's, uh, you know, uh, we can make a better assessment as to what uh, they really need and what they really uh, uh, want. So, and with that, uh, we can also uh, move into uh, our, our, uh, our, our distribution. So what is actually the principle? So having said the ideology of our disaster relief, um, of course, when we do our, our relief distribution, our charity distribution, uh, we stay with this five principle. And that is, uh, first, we want it to, done, to be done direct. So when we say we want it to be done direct is uh, we don't want to course uh, the, the, the aid that we're giving to these people to other, to other agency or to, to a government uh, body. But of course, uh, there are instances, you know, um, there are instances that we need to uh, partner with other people. But then um, uh, most of the time, uh, we try to give it direct. And we also try to stay focused in our distribution. When we say focused, uh, maybe let's say um, the fire, uh, or maybe let's say uh, there is a uh, big typhoon that happened and you know, um, it actually affected not only a, a, a location, but, but actually affected different uh, provinces. So what we do is we try to stay focused, which is actually the hard hit and which is actually, but of course, uh, do we directly go to the hard hit area? No. But what we do is we try to assess uh, the locations that are actually uh, affected by the disaster. So we try to see if this area is actually, uh, do we have volunteers in this area or uh, are our volunteers near this area? Then if it's actually near where our volunteers are and it's also um you know, uh, deeply affected by the disaster, then uh, we can actually focus on that one. But other people would say, but um, uh, location B is actually more hard hit. So we should actually be going to location B. Should we actually go there? Well, the answer is, uh, it's not a no and it's not a yes. So what we normally do is, first we go to um, the, the location where we are actually closer to first. Because our because uh, we also need to assess the manpower that we have locally. I mean, if our manpower locally is not going to be enough for a very uh, large scale um, uh, relief effort, then we stay focused on a smaller area. And then what we do is we stay focused and we we help them not only on the on the surface but then we also try to go deeper uh, and we try to see uh, what they really need and uh, and we try to give them what they really want of course um, the third is respect so when we actually go to our relief distributions we always uh, make sure that uh, we have respect in our hearts and minds so as master said uh, we always have to live a life with um, res uh, with uh, being gratitude being grateful uh, being respectful and uh, you know showing love to others, so that is why when we go to this kind of places, we always show them the respect. So uh, I mean, doing charity work, um, we should not be you know uh, we should not be seeing ourselves as people on top. And these people that we are helping are you know looking down on them. No, because we actually need to thank them. Uh, we have to respect them. We need to thank them because they gave us this opportunity of to help them. They gave us this opportunity for us to, um, to uh, share what we have. And of course, um, having said that, we also want to be pragmatic in our uh, distribution. When we say pragmatic, what is actually pragmatic? Pragmatic means, uh, you know, uh, we have to be practical more on 
uh, be uh, we have to be more practical than being an idealistic person. You know, it, uh, we always have to see what is uh, practical in that situation um, because sometimes what we think is not that practical. So we always have to be practical. And of course, the last but not the least, we want to be timely. I mean, um, we don't want to be going into a location where, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the disaster already happened like a month ago. So what we try to do is we try to go there at the very first time. But then in cases that we are, cannot make it uh, the very first time, at least, um, uh, oh, oh, oh uh, let me correct myself, not the very first time. We have to make sure that when we go to a disaster, first, the safety of our volunteers should be it, the number one priority. Because even if we say, okay, the disaster happened today and we're going there later in two hours but then it's not yet safe to go to that place then we suggest that you don't go directly to the place because when you go directly to the place we are actually exposing ourselves to danger which is uh, not going to be good to us and to the uh, to the survivors because we have to make sure that uh, every time we go out on a mission uh, our safety is put number one because um, we have to be, uh, when, when we give our love to other people, we first have to also uh, make sure that uh, we take care of ourselves and we give ourselves some love. So basically, uh, this, uh, this is where our, my sharing for today uh, would actually go around. So uh, the next slide is uh, emergency relief. So as you can see in the picture, in this emergency relief, uh, there are different kinds of emergency relief. So in this picture, uh, this is actually a relief distribution, a, a relief effort in the Philippines, wherein they actually carried out the cash for relief program. So there was a big flooding that happened in the Philippines and uh, the emergency relief that they thought of was actually for cash for relief. So of course, um, when we say, why did they actually do a cash for relief? Because number one, they saw that the location was very dirty. Of course, we also know that they need some, you know, they might need some food, they might need some clothing. Um, other people might just go uh, go to the site and do the distribution directly. But for City, uh, what we did is we did the cash for relief first. We started to clean their location and their environment first. Why? Because if we give them food and we give them a uh, shelter, I mean, if we give them clothing directly, yes, at that very moment, they might feel that those are useful. But then having a very dirty and um, not so ideal, ideal surrounding, uh, you know, uh, uh, sickness and disease would start to spread. So that is why what we want to do is we first um, assess and then we try to uh, give them this kind of you know clean up program it's a cash for relief program we're in these people are actually doing the clean up and at the same time uh they get the relief from the city volunteers and of course they also uh have a way of their living so when we do our um, emergency relief uh, of course uh, we don't forget uh doing the spreading the seeds of love program so what is actually the uh, spreading of seeds uh Spreading the Seeds of Love program, AISA. So as you can see in this place, uh, this is actually a large scale uh, spreading seeds of great love program. But then of course, it's not always uh, this kind of situation. You know, there are times that only a few hundreds of people are there, but then still uh, we carry out our spreading the seeds of great love program. So what do we actually share in this kind of program? Of course, we share to them uh, what City Foundation is all about. Of course, uh, we also want them to know uh, where the relief that, I mean, where the aid that they're receiving uh, would be coming from. Of course, apart from that one, we also want them to know that City Foundation, what kind of foundation City is. And uh, of course, eventually let them understand the principle of City Foundation. And of course, um, we, want, we want them uh, to be empowered, uh, you know, through this kind of, you know, uh, spreading the seeds of great love program. Through different stories, uh, we can actually empower them. We can actually give them more self-confidence because uh, sometimes when, you know, disaster happens, uh, you know, this, these uh, survivors actually lose hope. 
uh, they go despair and they don't know where where to uh, where to start all over again. And most often than not, they actually don't know how to stand up on their own feet again. So hopefully uh, through this, um, you know, uh, spreading seeds of love uh, uh, program, or we also call them AISA. So uh, through this AISA, we can empower them. We can share to them. We can give them confidence. We give them positive positivity than negativity. Because when disasters happen, uh, you know, um, a lot of people becomes negative. And of course, hopefully we build their faith again. So uh, with their faith uh, intact, then uh, these people will actually start to uh, move on and start to, you know, uh, be able to uh, stand on where they where they fall. Of course, and, and after having empowered and after giving back their faith, then this is a chance for them to change. Right. So what kind of change? This change may be, um, you know, a physical change, but this can also be a spiritual change and a mental change. So uh, like for this kind, uh, we see that, you know, the people during the disaster relief from a very uh, sad uh, situation, uh, we see that uh, their smiles are slowly coming back because of the help uh, that City Foundation has given them. So, of course, aside from uh, happiness that has changed, uh, you, we can also see the change in the environment. So, when we see the change in environment, maybe initially it was muddy and all it was dust all over and it was uh, furniture all over. But then eventually, after the, uh, after the uh, emergency relief aid that we've given, uh, we can see that their environment and their surroundings are actually even cleaner. And with that one, hopefully after having uh, done all this, then the people would come into unity, harmony, love, and joint effort. So maybe a lot of you would say, how come after, you know, just doing this kind of, you know, relief distribution, the people in our environment or the people in our neighborhood can be united? can be harmonized, can be, you know, sharing love and, uh, you know, joining effort. Well, it's not a one day or two day effort. It is actually an effort that has to be, um, you know, um, that has to be exerted by everybody because uh, through our spreading seeds of great love, uh, uh, through sharing to them uh, the, the spirit of, you know, city, uh, then we hopefully try to attain unity, harmony, love, and joint effort. So, and then this, co this community will actually have a uh, heart of gratitude. So every time, you know, uh, when, they, when they go out, uh, they would be helping each other. So maybe uh, in, uh, before, what they do is uh, they try to, you know, uh, save themselves first. But then... After hopefully after our ISA program, these people can also be people who can share their loving heart. Because as Master has said, you know, giving is not only the sole um, power of you know the people who are rich, but actually it is uh, anybody who has this loving heart can actually you know uh, give love and share the love to to other people. And people who has a loving heart can actually um, you know uplift the spirits of the people who were actually once devastated by disasters. So after having said this, so what's actually next? So, um, you know, uh, having done all the, uh, maybe all of you were saying, uh, why should we do all these things? Because uh, Master has actually told us, right, um, in, in city, you know, uh, if we want them to change, uh, we don't we don't ask them to change, but what we do is we help them first. We first attend to their uh, needs, and then when we when we have already attended to their needs and we have already attended to their uh, you know um, you know daily net necessities, then that is the time that they try to be uh, grateful for us. So when they be when they become grateful, then it's the time for them to pay it forward. So as I as you have seen in this uh, picture that I'm sharing, these are actually new volunteers. These are volunteers wearing the city volunteers vest. So in this vest, um, these people are once uh, you know the survivors of a disaster, and uh, these people actually were once palm facing up. 
But then uh, later on, after they received the the help and the aid of Tsuti, and after they have actually felt the love of Tsuti volunteers, uh, they try to pay it forward. They try to give back what they have received in in whether it's in a monetary fund in, in a monetary form or in a form of their time or in, in a form of uh, their effort. It is actually, it doesn't matter uh, in what form you're going to give it back to the people. But what's important is the sincerity that we have in mind and we carry out the spirit of volunteerism. So when we say uh, uh, carrying out the spirit of volunteerism, uh, we hopefully, you know, from this neighborhood wherein there is no city volunteers initially, then hopefully this neighborhood can actually grow more volunteers uh, together with us. So maybe, you know, um, from one volunteer to two, to four, to eight, and then they can grow actually exponentially. So that is actually the reason why we need to stay focused in doing our effort. Because if we don't stay focused, if we try to extend our hands to everybody, yes, we do help more people, but then uh, do we are we able to uh, give them the more in-depth help, which is uh, uplifting their spirit and uh, carrying out the spirit of volunteerism. And this is uh, the most important thing in Sidi. So when we help, we try to give them back their dignity and we restore the hope that was once lost. So uh, these people uh, paying it forward, you know, carrying out the spirit of volunteerism, and then eventually they would feel dignity they would feel that they have their dignity and hope restored. So we say in city, we don't only uh, save people, we change people and we empower their lives. So of course, uh, maybe a few take uh, a few take away from me would be, um, you know, uh, in city we believe that you know feeding a person with a bowl of rice, yes, we are able to help them for a day, but then. Uh, if we teach them how to farm, we maybe feed them for a life. But then in city, what we do is we actually try to give the seeds and teach them to be self-resilient. So when they become self-resilient, uh, in the future, when there are any disaster that happens, they are no longer those people, you know, um, palm facing up. You know, uh, I have this story, a short story in the Philippines, wherein, uh, you know, there were they were once uh, the, the the disaster survivors, but then uh, after receiving, uh, you know, help and aid from city, um, when another flooding happened, uh, they, they also got flooded. But then the first ma action that they did was to take their city uniform, wear it, and then go on a, a disaster survey. And they put themselves at the very end because they know that they need to help more people and we inspire more people. And hopefully um, through, the, through helping these people, we can help more and more people to be more self-reliant and more and more people uh, can actually carry on the spirit of volunteerism. And eventually these people will also be uh, volunteers of city who can actually carry out the seeds of great love and share it to more and more people. So every relief operation is actually um, a learning curve, but then uh, the basic remains. So, uh, whether it's an earthquake uh, disaster or a flood disaster or maybe a fire disaster, um, we cannot actually say that we have uh, a, like a one, two, three steps, one, two, three, four, five that we can follow. But then um, because we believe that, you know, all the disasters uh, that we encounter, there's always a learning curve for us. We always learn something new from this because uh, it's a different disaster. It's a different environment. It's a different government. It's a different people that we have to deal with. And it's, the, and it's also a different set of volunteers that we work together. So uh, we say that every relief operation is actually a learning curve, but the basic remains. And uh, this 
sent us to our next, uh, you know, to our next um, uh, speaker, which is Sister Joyce, who would share to us the basics of our relief operation. Over to you, Sister Joyce. Great, thank you so much, Sister Monica. Uh, Sister Monica has explained to everyone the very important ideology and principles of Tzu relief operations in the sense of disaster emergency relief. Of course, normal everyday charity large-scale relief operations uh, will be carried out the same way. So today, I'm really hoping to share a basic outline of any relief operations in Tzu in different countries under different uh, circumstances circumstances and situations, uh, sometimes different methods or means may be used to carry out different steps, but the principles remain the same throughout our uh, relief operations. So some of the um, slides that I have may slightly cross over with Sister Monica, but um, I will still go through them to make sure that we have an overall view and um, and sense of what we should do over a relief operation. So first, when we hear about a situation or a disaster, the first thing we do is to thoroughly and completely understand uh, what is happening in the situation or in the disaster. We can collect information by news, by uh, United Nations entity reports from government authorities. And the most important, Sister Monica has mentioned, is to really go into the local communities and see what the affected situation is in the affected location from ourselves with our own eyes. So we really understand what is happening by getting connected to the affected people in the affected communities. Once we understand an overview of what is happening with the disaster situation, we are able to identify either by area, by location, or by certain criteria out of the affected population who are the most in need. This concurs with the focus principle for today's five main relief principles because of our resources are not unlimited. So it's quite crucial to really select where our resources going to by knowing who we really want to help, who is the most needed in this case. From there, we can define a definition for our target population of who uh, will be receiving our um, assistance of choice. From that definition, we will be going uh, to construct or obtain a name list for this definition of target population. We can click this name list either in person, again, by visiting a community, by really going there ourselves and getting in touch with the people. But sometimes uh, we can also obtain lists from the government or other entities in collaboration. In this case, the list should definitely be verified by visiting the families ourselves with the volunteers. Rather than really thinking about uh, verifying as a means of checking the name list against our target criteria, I think it is even more important to uh, see it as that we are getting connected with the people to see it, to listen to them, to understand their situation and their sufferings. And then we know completely in our heart, we fully can trust why we're doing it in this relief and what we're doing uh, is really suitable uh, for our target population and beneficiaries. So when we're talking about a name list, by minimal, it should definitely include the name of the beneficiary, or if we are talking about in the unit of families, it will be the name of the family head number of family members, and a way of identification, either via ID numbers, address, telephone number, or other means. This is just to make sure there's no duplications in our name list so that everybody gets uh, one unit of uh, the assistance that we're going to provide. In this example below, each family was visited and the situations are assessed and recorded. This is very, very well done as that the volunteers will know exactly what's happening with the family situations and we know what exactly uh, they are in need of. This comes to uh, bringing us to the principle of being pragmatic. 
So once we understand them, we can understand what type of relief aid or assistance that would be the most helpful for the beneficiaries. And from that, we can suggest the items and quantities to be provided, the duration that we're providing it for, and how many times throughout the duration for the total duration of assistance. And uh, a lot of situations following an emergency relief, a daily necessities package will be provided if uh, the families have lost everything in a disaster. They will need toothbrush, etc., everything for their daily lives and food. In the case in uh, Mozambique in 2019, after Eli's cyclone, for the second round of distribution, we have prepared a reconstruction and food package. Why do we do this? This is because that they need tools not only to reconstruct their houses, but also tools to farm, to grow their own food. It's on to help them on their way to stand back up on their feet again, to be able to farm and feed themselves. In some countries, it is possible to provide debit cards, gift cards, or gift vouchers. It is also a very good way to provide help in countries where uh, the means is possible to do this. And this allows that the, our beneficiaries to choose exactly what they need when they are needed and buy exactly uh, what they are lacking in their lives after the disaster occurs. Over the past two years, uh, due to COVID, we have done a lot of food reliefs around the world. All food items we give out should be basic necessities and should be vegetarian. For uh, During COVID time, each food package was prepared for one month per family. When the unit of distribution is for one family, then we should really think about the food portion that is required, uh, let's say, from a family of two members, maybe a lot different uh, to a family with six or ten members. So master uh, always wants us to think about this very, very thoroughly. So when we provide the packages, provide the help exactly what the family is needed, not too much and not too small. So in the case where uh, physical aid is provided, usually we'll suggest two to three sets of different size packages. That means for larger families, we'll provide a package that is larger in size, more in quantities, so it can feed the family properly for one month. And for a family with smaller number of people, a smaller size package is given. So everybody, for all the families that we give the packages to, um, the packages will be enough for them for one month. Once the items and quantities are settled, you can go on to uh, get quotations and then prepare a budget and project proposal uh, for HQ. And then we will ask blessings from master to go ahead with the project. After the proposal has been settled, uh, we can go ahead and to procure and package the items neatly as required and label them with Tsuji logos. We pack the packages very neatly to show our respect to the beneficiaries. Um, and I think of it as that we prepare it with our full hearts as how we would like to receive a big package, a gift package. So it's neatly packed and nicely thought of for them to take home for transportation, etc. Also, what should be prepared will be a distribution banner for Tsuji or together with other collaborating parties for use later on at the distribution site. Something else that is also very important is to prepare and distribute a distribution notification. What it does is that um, it can come in the forms of a voucher or a letter. It tells the beneficiaries when and where to go for the distribution, where to collect the aid and want to bring uh, for the distribution. They may need their IDs or other things. Uh, the vouchers or the notifications should be provided to the beneficiaries according to our name list, no more than uh, one week at the best, three to four days prior to the distribution. This voucher or letter of notification can also serve as an identification for the distribution.
it is a uh, very important sense. Sometime we will see at the later slides what happens at the distribution is that we only want to have people that is on our name list there to decrease the possibilities of chaos. So if we distribute these vouchers according to the name list, and only our nameless people have the vouchers, they can the vouchers can be used as a means of identification for entry into the distribution. So it is also very important to think of some ways to prevent counterfeits of the letter or the vouchers uh, so that you know uh, completely that the people that come to the distribution on the day with the vouchers will be the people uh, that is on our name list. There are a lot of things to organize as well um, for the distribution venue, for furniture, for um, audio and video equipment, for AISA, the love spreading uh, ceremony, and other necessary equipment, as well as manpower and transportation. So once everything is arranged, it'll be most important uh, will be the distribution on the day. So there are a lot of things happening in the distribution itself. Um, aside from giving out the relief aid to the beneficiaries, the distribution is really our opportunity to meet with all the beneficiaries. Uh, Sister Monica has explained that um, we will be able to introduce Sidi and let them know that Master Zheng Yan is um, the reason why all of this is possible. And that city volunteers all over the world uh, are thinking and caring uh, for the people there and that they are not alone. We are helping them to stand back up for whatever banners that have been through and that we are here for them. This is all happens in the AISA program or AISA ceremony. In the literal sense, it is the Spread Seeds of Love ceremony or Spread Seeds of Love program. So what we're trying to do is that aside from giving the physical aid, is respect and love. And what we are hoping to do is to sow a seed of love in the heart of these beneficiaries. And maybe one day the seeds will sprout and they will be able to help others in their community. So aside from AISA, uh, what happens in the AISA ceremony will come a little bit later. A lot of things also happen in a distribution. The order of things may be different according to each country, different locations. It might be depending on what you're giving and how you're giving it. It depends on the relief aid that you're giving out. Okay. So what I'm about to show you will be things that occur in a distribution but it might not necessarily happen in the order that I show you in, right? Okay, so one important thing is to um, check who that is coming into the distribution menu are on our name list. So you can check this via uh, distribution notification or voucher or and or with uh, their IDs. So we know this is who uh, we are going to distribute to. Some locations are able to use scanners with a digitized system. So it's very easy to scan them and check them off as they come through uh, with a barcode or a QR code. Once the checking uh, at the first stop, has occurred, then the beneficiaries are guided orderly and systematically to the AISA ceremony venue with the distribution waiting area where assistance are provided to elderly and disabled. Uh, and to seats that are done in a orderly fashion where everybody can wait in a sense of calmness and serenity. Um, all of this, we call it Ciji Renwen, Ciji Humanistic Culture, so that everybody can be organized neatly and quietly and calmly and not to create any chaos at a distribution site. So this is where an AISA ceremony, uh, the spread of love, the seed, spread the seed of love ceremony uh, can occur. And so we can introduce Ciji and Master Zheng Yan. And always we prepare a, uh, a read, a letter of blessings from Master to know, even though that Master is not there at the disaster relief, but she is caring for everyone. She is thinking about them. 
another thing we do in the ceremony is to perform and sing Tzi songs and perform sign languages. It brings uh, the it brings a livelihood and lighten up the atmosphere for our ceremony. A lot of you will have heard of One Family or Happy Faces. These are very common songs that we use in our ISA ceremony. We also introduce the Bamboo Bank era and also give a chance for everybody to pay it forward, even though if it's just a very small coin, uh, by giving that out, by wishing somebody can receive help from my little bit of giving, it will sow a seed of goodness and a seed of love in their hearts and in their lives. Normally, as well, not normally, but commonly, very commonly in the ISA ceremony, a song of prayer will uh, be sung along to at the end of an ISA ceremony to bring serenity and calmness for uh, all the beneficiaries uh, that are at the distribution site. So that is what we commonly do in an ISA ceremony during maybe half an hour to an hour's time. It really tells the beneficiaries who we are, why we're here, and what we are, um, why we are doing this really to provide this assistance, not only to uh, give you something, but what we're really hoping is to bring the love for you and for your community and for you to spread the, uh, the seed of love later on in, in the communities. So following the ISA ceremony, um, many things can happen, uh, either identity checks, uh, voucher collections, uh, signature collections, and uh, most importantly for the beneficiaries to receive the aid. So this should happen uh, with a devised orderly fashion where, where people are seated, where they should go, how many lines of movement there should be. And um, different things can be done to um, lead, guide all the beneficiaries in an orderly fashion. So near names can be checked off or um, by other methods such as different chicken counters, and then uh, signing or fingerprinting can be done to prove that they have received the relief aid. This is very important for our uh, financial side of things and financial audits as an NGO. Most importantly, we will be giving out the relief aid with a um, sincere bow to show gratitude and respect to the beneficiaries. I have mentioned earlier, sometimes uh, in some countries, it is possible to give uh, gift cards or debit cards. In this sort of sense, there is no big items to give out, but it's important to explain how to use the cards and what to watch out for to each of the beneficiaries. So once that all occurs, we give farewell to the beneficiaries and sometimes we provide the necessary assistance uh, for them to go home or transportation. And that is the most important part, I guess, for a relief distribution. So following a distribution day, we have to finalize the project by collecting the statistics for the distribution, including numbers of items provided, families or people um, rec received relief aid, volunteers participated, quantify the coins collected from the bamboo bank. Although these are just uh, numbers and it is usually uh, being collected and provided at the end of a distribution day very quickly. Um, even though this has got nothing to do with what we are hoping to uh, provide to people, but it's a means of way to tell others what Tzu is doing as an NGO and it's facts of uh, what we are doing. Also important for the financial side of things to collect signed name lists of vouchers and also uh, to keep record and write Tzu's history to collect distribution photos, videos, and stories and to put everything uh, about these records in a PowerPoint format and also to prepare an expenditure record uh, for all the local receipts and invoices for the financial audits. 
of course, that is the end of the project. But the most important is hoping that the people have received aid from Tzidi, has understood Tzidi, has known about Tzidi, will go on to uh, become Tzidi volunteers, to share about Tzidi, to let more people um, being able to uh, sow a seed of love and provide help in the community when and where things are needed. Okay. At the very end, there is a very small uh, three-minute video, which I can share uh, right now. We have a little bit of time left. This is in 2017 in Mexico, uh, a earthquake relief uh, that lasted three months from October to December that year. It shows everything that we have done there over the course um, of what I've just explained. From getting the name list, obtaining the name list, verifying the name list, and then at the end, the distribution. So um, let us share the video. Yeah,呼吸歌此际刊在团在去复查工作 我们是非常落实的，啊，一户一户一户一户，根据政府的那个名单，出去复查以后，我们几乎差不多完整了。这里是他们现在又是吃饭又是睡觉的唯一的一个小屋顶，其他的什么都没有。那剩下一点水可以